All right, so in this video, we're going to be looking at how to graph a quadratic function. Uh, we have one it's in standard form and one that is in vertex form. And they have different uh, strengths and weaknesses depending on the form that they're in. Um, some things are gonna be easier in one and some things are gonna be easier in others. So we're gonna do one example of each and then we're gonna go through sketch the graph and then we'll compare it to a graph from technology to make sure that we've graphed it correctly. So we're gonna start with this first example. Um, from standard form, the easiest thing to do is to find the uh, intercepts. Uh, the y-intercept is just what you get when x is equal to zero. So when x equals zero, y is equal to three, obviously. So that gets us our zero, three point. And then for the other intercepts, we would need to factor. Uh, and I don't think this is going to factor. Or um, we need to use the quadratic formula. So here I'm going to, since this doesn't factor, I'm going to try to use the quadratic formula. which is this guy, if you remember. So x is going to be, so in this top equation here, um, x, b is going to be negative 12. And so when I square that, um, the fact that it's negative won't matter. But out here, my A is negative 2, and my C is 3. And in my denominator, I also have a negative 2. And so what are we going to get? Uh, my numerator, negative and negative 12, is going to be positive 12. What's going to go under my square root? It's going to be 144 plus, because I have two negatives. Um, this is going to be 6, and this is going to be 6 times 4 is 24. And then in my denominator, I'll have a negative 4. And if I simplify some more, um, 12 plus and minus uh, 144 plus 24 is 168. and minus four on the bottom. And let's see if we can simplify. Uh, 168, what divides evenly into 168? I can take out a four. which would leave 42 behind. And 42 is factors of six and sevens, which is two times three times seven. So that doesn't simplify anymore. So I can take out this four as the square root of four gives me a two and 42 is left behind. And so we can simplify a tad. Um, 12 divided by negative four is going to be, um, negative three, and then two divided by negative four is going to be a half and our square root of 42. So those are our two answers. And in order to plot them, we're going to need to estimate their values numerically. So negative three plus square root of 42 divided by 2 is going to be about 0 0.24037. And if this is a minus, we 
negative 6.24037, blah, blah, blah. All right. So now we have our intercepts. Now to put this in axis of uh, vert in vertex form in order to get the axis of symmetry, we can either complete the square or we can use the formula for the uh, vertex, which is just this front part of the quadratic formula without the square root, negative V over two A, which is what I'm gonna use, uh, negative, negative 12, divided by two times negative two is gonna give me uh, negative 12 over negative four, which is gonna give me positive three. Um, actually, uh, negative negative 12 would give me positive 12, and that would give me negative 3. You can always do a quick check on um, any arithmetic mistakes once you have some things worked out, because uh, these coordinates, uh, they are on either side of the vertex. So positive 3 is not possible. It's not in here. Negative 3 is in the middle of these two values. So that is consistent and then the k coordinate is just f evaluated at h, so at the vertex value. So if we plug that in, we get negative 2 times negative 3 squared minus 12 times negative 3 plus 3 is going to be negative 2 times 9, since multiplying a negative by itself ma makes it positive but then plus 36, because again, two negatives, plus three, and that's gonna give me negative 18 plus 36 plus three, which is gonna give me 18 plus three, which is 21. And so these uh, values are intercepts, x comma zero. This value is gonna give me negative three comma 21. And the x coordinate of the vertex is the axis of symmetry. So that is x equals negative three. Now, if you get values for all of these points, this is usually enough to plot your graph without too much difficulty. And so let's go ahead and sketch this by hand. I'll just draw a quick sketch of it. And then I'm going to make it a little uneven since we have, um, we know that our intercepts are on the more negative side. So first of all, let's plot on our X graph. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and then one, two, three. So our axis of symmetry is going to be here. And then our intercepts are going to be at negative 6.24. So here was our negative six. So out here someplace and positive 2.4. So out here someplace, I also know that I have um, an X intercept or Y intercept rather at zero three. Uh, and somewhere there's a vertex up here. I'm gonna make my Y units smaller than my X units just so that I can get to 21 on this graph. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 
22. So my vertex is going to be here. And that means my y-intercept is going to be here. And so now what I need to do is I need to try to connect the dots. And so I need to go through these points and then try symmetrically to go through these points. And then we know from the fact that there's a leading negative that it's going to open down. We know that the vertex is here. And so let's go to technology and compare our graph with the actual graph. Again, what I would expect here is that um, I had to compress my Y units in order to get this all on the graph. And so we'll see what the other one, it probably will look a little taller um, than what we have here, but that's fine. We can double check the coordinate points on Desmos. So, and so let's see how our graph does. Here's our graph. Uh, I've had to ask Desmos to label all of our key points for us. So these are consistent with what we found. Here's our y-intercept. Here's our two x-intercepts. Again, a little taller because I didn't have to compress I can press both X and Y instead of just X. On the Desmos graph, here's our equation so that you know it's the same equation. And here's our vertex. And of course, we could plot on the Desmos graph the axis of symmetry, which would also, again, go right through the vertex. All right, so we had a second equation that we also wanted to look at. So let's bring that one, copy that down. Now, this one is going to be very easy to find the vertex. Um, the, the vertex is just um, one half comma five over four, because it's in vertex form. So we can just pull that off of our equation. This is also um, flipped upside down. Um, so it opens downward because of this negative out front. Now, where we are going to have more difficulty with this one algebraically um, is to get the uh, intercepts. So to do that, we'll need to FOIL everything out. Um, and while we're here, I'll also note the axis of symmetry is just x equals a half. Again, it's the line, the, the vertical line that goes through the vertex. All right, so let's see what we've got here. Uh, negative x minus a half squared plus five over four. Now, if I, I multiply out my square, remember I can't distribute squares exact, you know, directly with a plus or minus sign in between them. Instead, I have to apply the perfect square binomial formula or I have to FOIL. But when I do that, I get X times X and then X times a negative one half and then another x times negative one half, and then oh, negative negative one half times itself is going to be one quarter, and then my constant is still there. And now I have to combine like terms and distribute. So negative x squared, my negative one half and my negative one half are going to become negative one x. And then when I distribute the minus sign through, that'll become plus x and then minus one quarter plus five over four. And so I'm gonna end up with negative X squared um, plus X and five quarters minus one quarter is four quarters. So that's gonna be plus one. And I lost my minus sign out front. That's not good. There we go. All right, so that is the form multiplied out. Since I know my graph opens down and I know that um, this is a positive vertex, it's gonna have to cross the intercept at some point, the x-axis at some point. Um, I can see now that my y-intercept is zero, one. So that's gonna be easy to plot. But my x-intercepts, this doesn't factor. Um, I don't think, 
So I'm going to need to use my quadratic formula again. So let's see what we get. B is one and A is negative one and C is one and A is negative one. And so we end up with negative one plus and minus the square root of, so this is a minus minus, so that'll become a plus. One plus four is five all over negative two. And so we end up with uh, positive one plus or minus the square root of five. Two, because if I distribute the negative through the top, the plus and minus still is minus plus. It's the same thing. And so we estimate these values by throwing them in the calculator. So one plus the square root of five divided by two is going to give me approximately one. 0. 0.6180, blah, blah, blah. And if I flip the minus sign, I get negative 0. 0.6180, blah, blah, blah. All right, so those are our points for the graph. So now let's sketch it. I didn't need to do that. Now our points are all kind of small, but they're a little skewed to the positive. So let's make one, two, one, two, one, two. Yeah, make the because we are so close to zero, we're going to make things somewhat larger because we'll have to zoom in when we plot this. So where is our vertex? It's going to be at one half five fourths, so like right around here. Our axis of symmetry is going to be here at one half. Our intercepts, 1.6 and negative 0.6 about here. And we have an intercept at 0, 1. And so when we try to draw this, I, handwriting with technology is less good than it is on paper. <laughs> Let's double check with Desmos and see if our graph looks correct. And when we go back to Desmos, we get the following graph. So this is consistent with what we plotted. Our intercept, our y-intercept is 0, 1. Our vertex at 0.5 and 1.25 and our two x-intercepts at phi and one over phi, it turns out. All right.